Hey guys, so doing an example uh, live game. I've got an opponent rated I think 698 and we've got a 20 minute game going so I, I get no rating points if I win and I've decided to open with the London system. I've just done a video on this for a follower so uh, d4 followed by getting my dark squared bishop out before I proceed to build my uh, pyramid. As he's brought his knight out to here I'm going to bring this knight out here to oppose it just making sure that he can't advance to e4. Now he's brought his bishop out, okay. I'm just going to drop my bishop back. The bishop does very often come to that square in the London to face off against white stark squared bishop. And I'm going to recapture with the h-pawn, giving myself a semi-open file. Okay, he's, he's playing Decent move so far, so queen to there. I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. I can actually recapture this one with a knight, so I don't need to double up my A point if I don't want to. I need to think about castling as well at some point. Okay, so the queen's dropped back. So what I want to do in this game is to explain my move selection as much as possible. Okay, so I've I've played e3, it, it finishes this this pyramid and um, I can't castle now. So if he takes then I can't take back with C pawn. Um, I can't really advance the D pawn because he's got two attackers. So he just capture say with a knight and uh, I've lost the pawn. So I'm wondering about maybe rook to c1, then if he takes inwards, I can take inwards, and it comes with a threat, but it doesn't. And the reason is because queen can simply capture the rook. Uh, how about this? Queen to c4 effectively pins the pawn, because the queen is undefended. Okay, so if I do that, yeah, he can't really chase my queen off. He, He's, he has got d5. And then I can simply capture the pawn with a queen. Okay, Because the queen's undefended, this pawn is pinned. So he, he, he literally can't capture now because I'll just capture the queen. If he plays d4, I can just play queen takes c5. Okay. Same deal if he plays b5. Okay. I think it's time to move my next knight out. Let's just scan the board, see what's undefended. That's a weakness, g7. Um, but I can't really capitalize on it right now. <clears throat> I think I want to move my, now my g knight. Um, and I think f3 is, is the correct square. There's no point putting it here because it blocks off my light squared bishop. I could even just simply capture the pawn right now. Then we might look, be looking at an exchange of queens and a simplified game, which would suit me less as the more experienced player. I could capture it with a pawn also. It's a free capture and it stops these pawns from coming out because my, my queen is defended. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Right, so now if he can't play b6, b5, d6, or d5, because I have capture, and in this case it's capturing en passant, my queen is defended. So I'm now attacking his queen twice. Right, so I recapture with a bishop. This pawn is not under attack at this time. So I've basically I've won a, a pawn, or have I won two pawns in that? Okay, I've captured that first pawn, and now I've captured a second pawn. Then we exchange queens, he's brought his bishop there. Okay, big question now is whether I try to uh, hang on to this pawn and protect it, or simply let it go. And that's an important question. I like the fact I've got a semi-open h-file, because black's pawns are now 
very much favouring his king side. So if he's going to castle, he's going to castle that way. Therefore, I'm going to want my bishop, I think, on this lovely diagonal. In case this knight moves, I'll have a bishop and a rook looking at the h7 square. Um, so you see, I'm starting to think about the strategy of the game as it's going to unfold. So I'm not just thinking about the next move. Um, so I want my next moves to be uh, steps towards the strategic objective, if you know what I mean. Okay, so I'm inclined not to worry about this pawn right now. I think I'm two pawns up. I think I need to be thinking about um, the, the end of the game, how to win the game. So I've got two ideas. I think one is to castle, castle long, um, and maybe have then bring both of my rooks into the attack against h7. Um, and then this knight's going to want to come out. I think I'm going to castle now. I can always drop my bishop back to here, to here, or just straight to d3 where it's on that diagonal. As so often is the case, you, it's, you, you, you're thinking about how do I get rid of this knight. The pawn is going to be useful there. It's an annoyance for the time being, but nothing's really likely to be wanting to land on those squares. Okay. So I've got two options. I've got b3, d3. d3 puts it straight on the diagonal where it wants to be, so I don't see any reason not to not to play that. The bishop on here is good because it's defended by the pawn. Right now, where it is now, it's, it's not defended. Okay, knight comes out. I'm not too concerned about that knight. It could come to here, in which case my bishop just might drop back. Um, I can't really... I could pin it to the rook, and then if knight captures, I've got knight captures. But I like this bishop. I think it's, this bishop has a future. So I'm just going to develop my knight, I think. So now these two knights are kind of in opposition, looking at these squares here. They're both controlling those squares. Ah, uh, now he surprised me. He surprised me <laughs> very much there. Okay. Um, wow. Okay, so that's why you're rated 700. Um, he's just castled his king onto a semi-open file. There's no pawn in front of that king. The king is unprotected, it's bare, and I see an immediate tactic. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, which means that knight to here, looking at this pawn, if knight captures, I'm gonna have a fork against both rooks. So it's a tactic. It's not a particularly difficult one to spot. My opponent should see it and should respond by moving one of the rooks or even by dropping the bishop back. Something, anything to protect that pawn. Okay, he's seen it. But what this has done is it's forced him to spend time on a move that he didn't really want to make. But there's a, <clears throat> a counterpoint to this as well, which is that by moving the knight there, I now have one, two, three attackers against this square on h7. So I'm going to go in, I think, and he's got two defenders, right? Very important. If attackers and defenders are equal, then generally the defender is okay, and the exchange shouldn't go ahead. Obviously, it depends on what the pieces are and the value of the pieces and the order of the capture, okay? Uh, but here, if knight takes and knight takes, I've got rook takes, rook takes, yeah. Basically, I'm going to win the pawn. Is the way it works out. So the pawn is mine. If he wants to capture with a knight, then I can recapture with a bishop. And he really shouldn't recapture now with the rook. Okay. Fortunately, my rook is defended, so this bishop isn't pinned. This bishop can now move away quite quite happily, and I'm going to move it to here where it's looking at this knight. And now we've got a face off with rooks. So if he captures, I recapture. And now I'm in a position where I'm um, three pawns in front. And the interesting thing that I'm going to show you now is I'm just going to identify which three pawns they are. Okay, so we've got one, two, one, two here. This is an extra pawn. This is an extra pawn. These two are faced, and then I have a kind of an extra one on the G file. But that's a double pawn, so it's not really worth quite the same. So, <clears throat> so we've got F5, and it's attacking the bishop. Um, 
The natural move would seem to be like d5, where I maintain the threat against the knight and the threat against the king's side. I want, I want to keep my bishop on this diagonal or, or this diagonal, looking towards the king. If you have the, a bishop on like the same side of the board as your opponent's king, then because they only move diagonally and this way it's got no nowhere to go, then it's looking at the wrong side of the board. You don't want it looking where your um, opponent's king isn't. Now if I drop back and he tries to trap me, I can, I can drop back to here and re-maneuver. But then my bishop really is trapped. I mean, it, it can't go there or there or there, so... Um, so bishop drops back, he goes there. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's the... I'm just going to avoid that kind of complication. I, I don't want to have to waste a lot of moves re-maneuvering my bishop around. Like if I go there, I might have to go back here, there and everywhere. So it's, it's happy there, it's in the middle of the board, it's looking kind of partly towards the, the king and partly towards the other side of the board. Okay, this is a, an unnecessary pawn move. I think when you are, when your king's already that exposed, I think you need to keep your pawns fairly tight and if not, move the king up towards the pawns, just for a bodyguard. Okay. I think he's making moves now with no particular rhyme or reason. I'm thinking b3 is a good move. Another thought is maybe rook to h7, which is attacking this. Now, um, he may defend with a rook. That's that's the issue, which is pretty easy. He'll just he'll just slide the rook over. So that's not really an attack. I could swap off my bishop for the knight. Now I have to ask myself, okay, is that a good idea considering the the layout of the board? And um, so the question is, is it an open board? Are there going to be lots of open lines? We actually still have quite a lot of pawns still left on. I, I haven't lost any pawns at this point, and he's lost three. Um, so generally, a closed-up game... Uh, where particularly when the center of the board is closed will favor knights over bishops when the board is open that will tend to favor bishops but I think I, I would like to keep a bishop in the end game so I'm not going to I'm not going to swap off my bishop for no good reason so I'm just going to play b3 getting this nice pawn structure here bishops defended at the at the head of that he can't advance his pawn because I can just capture it with my extra G pawn. Right, knight can't go there. Could go there with check and a fork on here. Right, so that's a threat. Okay, so the threat is knight to d3, threatening both of these, and one of them is undefended. So I could move my rook across just to defend f2. And then if he comes in with check, I just move my king. Another option would be to play f4 now. I play f4, he could take on Passant, I recapture, undoubling my pawns. Okay. I play f4, his knight comes in with check. I simply move forwards. Even if his knight goes to f2 and attacks my rook, that's fine. I'm going to play f4. Okay, he's coming with check, it's a pointless check. So I think I'm going to go to c2. He can come in there and attack the rook, but that's no trouble. He can't come here because the rook takes. Okay, that he can't go there. That's a possibility. That's a possibility. That's out of bounds. All right, now, where does my rook go? I'm starting to think it, h, uh, h7 looks fine. The rook, by the way, cannot come here or here because of my bishop. So let's play h7. I'm just going to hold it and hover and check that there's nothing stupid that I've missed. The knight, I know it's three, st three squares away from my king, so it cannot check my king. It would take two jumps to check my king. My bishop's in a good place. I'm not worried about the knight, not worried about his bishop. Not worried. He can, he can simply push the pawn.
which wouldn't be a bad move actually, it would uh, add a defender to this one. Okay, that's interesting. Why has he done that? So this pawn is now hanging. I can take that pawn. His knight's not going to go there. I'm just going to grab the pawn. Got to watch my clock. I'm on eight minutes. 20 minute game. Okay. Oh, oh well done. Yes, I completely missed that. Well done. Okay, so he's forked my king and a pawn and my bishop. So I'm just going to move back. I know that this is a, a safe position. So you remember I said that in this situation the knight would be two jumps away from check. Well, he's, he did it. <laughs> he moved to there. Um, I, I rushed my next move, so allowing, allowing this. So I've grabbed the pawn, he's grabbed a pawn. He could grab either another pawn for free, which is probably the better move, or he could grab the bishop and lose his knight. So now I'm still three, pawn, three pawns up. Because I got a free pawn here, he's just grabbed the pawn and then traded off his piece. I think it would have been better for him to capture g2, but there we go. Alright, now I've got rook e7. <sighs> My pawns are actually better than black's. Black's got kind of two pawn islands of two. I've got a two, a doubled, which is like a, I call it a one and really another two. So I'm slightly better. Um, if rook there, rook takes, pawn takes, king can't even approach, that's going to be interesting. Uh, my knight looks like a good piece, I've got a fork there potentially. That's also a nice square for my knight. I think he's moved his rook here because he's got ideas of pushing this pawn down. I can block it pretty easily with my king. So I'm, I'm going to move my knight here. And then I, I think maybe knight to e5 would be good because it disconnects. Interposes a piece between the rook and the pawn. Leaving that pawn really quite vulnerable. And it also means that I've got two pieces then attacking the bishop. So that's overwhelming the king. The king cannot even recapture because it would be in check. So there's the threat there of a free piece. So I like that move. Knight to there. If, if he pushes the pawn, I'm definitely playing that move, but I'm more than likely going to play it whatever he does. You need to think towards the end of a game um, <clears throat> about mobilizing your king, and you need to think about the way that the pawns are laid out. Um, okay, I think I just win this pawn now. He's got bishop to there. Um, but he can't convert the pawn. Yeah, so he's, he's got that. Um, I have a check. I also have quite an evil fork. Let's think this through though. If I play there, He's going to capture with a bishop. Then I can't recapture with a knight because that opens up this e file and he gets a queen and that's curtains. <sighs> okay, let's think about this. Check there. King can't capture. King has one, two, no, two squares it can go to. Has to move. Okay, so let's say there and king to here. Hmm. I want to get rid of the bishop. Right, the bishop's the defender of that. Although the pawn isn't going to do, isn't going to convert in a hurry. But my concern is that the rook manoeuvres round, and the protected pawn, and I'm, I'm in trouble. So I've got that. Bishop takes, rook takes. Bishop takes, rook takes. And I'm okay in that situation. Okay, and seriously, I mean, obviously he's in check. So he can either move, he's got one, two, three. Okay, he's moved to there. I now have another check if I need. What I want to do is take the bishop off the board. But I can't do it 
while moving my knight. This is an interesting situation. See, if I move my knight to there with check, he's got bishop takes, pawn takes, but then queen and its curtains, I may, I think, be forced to manoeuvre my, my rook round myself. At least that stops black's rook from... Oh, I could have just captured the rook. Why didn't I just capture the rook? Okay. Okay, I, I'm going to take that anyway. So I'm a piece up, and now I've also got king to e1, which I probably had all along. Yeah, I did have all along. So now what I want to do is I want to bring... Okay, the, the rooks... If I move the knight, the rooks on pre. So I'm going to... I need to maneuver the rook away. I can capture the pawn with my king, which pins my my knight. Then if rook takes knight, I take rook, king takes uh, rook. So I think moving the rook makes sense at this point. Um, I think to here, yeah, he can't he can't convert the pawn. He can't promote yet. So I think there, and then here I've got with check, or I've got capture the pawn, and I'm, I'm going to throw in the check. So he can't go here or here or there or there. So he's got one, two, three squares he can go to. You need to be doing this in your chess, okay? Um, let's, cap, let's grab the pawn because the rook is now defended by the pawn as well as the knight so he can't just grab the rook because I, I can capture for free and and you know because I've got double defenders it's all good all right he's attacking my pawn I'm just gonna move back and defend knight now defends the rook the rook is defending the pawn and we're okay. I'm going to have to get a move on, guys, I'm afraid, because I, I lose 16 points if I actually lose this game, so I don't want that to happen. So I might have to speed up on the old moves. This pawn's on pre, that pawn's undefended. So that's un on pre, meaning it can be captured. Um, undef so it's actually on pre and undefended, but I can't capture it because the knight is busy defending the rook. So I might play like rook c6 as an idea. Um, okay, what options have we got? Let's throw in a check. If I can persuade this pawn to move, then the rook would be on pre itself. So he can't take. Okay, blunder. Whew. The guy's got 13 minutes on the clock. I'm down to three. He shouldn't be uh, making a, a move that rashly, but that's why he's 700 rated, right? You get blunders, blunders and blunders at this level. Or if you wait around long enough, your opponent will blunder. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pre-move a couple of moves because this king, the pawn can't move. The king is now actually trapped in these four squares of the board, so I can quite happily pre-move most of my next moves. All right, I can convert these pawns. What I need to be very careful about, of course, is not stalemating my opponent. So, it should be a pretty f formal walk in now. Okay, I can get a rook or a queen quite happily. He's not gonna be in check. So let's make it a rook just to keep life simple. Okay, I can come here, then I can go there, and then I can go there, and that will be checkmate. Okay, there you go. Uh, some good play there by my opponent. Um, did definitely, you know, make me sweat at one point with that uh, nearly promoting a pawn. So um, I think you know a few people have said they they like these live games. They like to see the thought process of someone who's rated over a thousand um, in real time. So I hope that's been a useful one for you. Uh, that's how to be a 700 rated player and I'll see you very very soon. Take care.